Good afternoon, everyone. Today is uh, lecture number eight of this hair treatment class, and today we're gonna discuss about those standing mechanisms which we already have started from the previous lectures. And uh, today, uh, as if you remember, in the previous class, uh, we have discussed about how dislocations and solute atom interacting with each other, right? so in this uh, lecture i will show you a phenomenon that is basically called yield point phenomenon which basically uh, appears in low carbon steels or mild steel we people call or in ferritic steels uh, basically and in some aluminum uh, magnesium alloys aluminum zinc alloys and some other metals like titanium cadmium also so where we'll see how the solute atom basically the carbon or you can say the nitrogen atoms which are very small or you can say interstitial atoms interacting with dislocations hmm. that gives rise to the seal point phenomenon i think already we have started the topic but i will uh, show you a video very interesting video to you right now just have a look and just see what is happening is the mobility of dislocations and thus increases the metal strength. The dislocation imposes lattice strains in the vicinity of the dislocation line, compression above the line where the atoms are squeezed together and tension below the line where the atoms are pulled apart. Now we'll introduce a relatively small interstitial impurity atom into the lattice. Even small impurity atoms are usually larger than the interstitial sites in the lattice and, as a result, introduce compressive lattice strains on the adjacent host atoms. This solute atom will wander or diffuse through the lattice and will be attracted to the tensile strain region near the dislocation and just below the end of the extra half plane of atoms. The compressive strain field surrounding the solute atom will partially cancel the tensile lattice strains imposed by the dislocation. As a result of this relaxed strain field, a greater externally imposed shear stress is required to move the dislocation than is necessary in the pure metal. Macroscopically, this results in increased strength and hardness. Uh, I hope you people have uh, understood the concept behind the uh, upper yield point. Okay, can you can anybody tell me how this uh, upper yield point is seen in some metals like your mild steels or your ferritic steels or low carbon steels? What what may be the reason behind that? This is the upper yield point, if you remember, and this is upper lower lead, lower yield point, and these are serrations. Yeah. So what will the answer? Upper yield point means you understand a more stress is a more load or a more stress is required for uh, dislocation to move or to plastic deformation to happen what may be the reason you have seen a video and can you people tell me can you people figure it out what will happen let me share this one okay you can see here uh, yes this is up this is this is a upper yield point and this is the lower yield point here hmm. yes this is upper yield point and this is the lower yield point so what what is the main reason behind the upper yield point why a more stress is required for plastic deformation You have seen the video. Everybody have seen the video, right? So what may be the reason? Yes, Just yes. Yes, Devi Prashant, you are saying something like that. Uh, you said the foreign particles we introduce into the lattice that yes. uh, mm -hmm. that goes to the dislocation line position and uh, yes. Mm -hmm. 
due to that the, uh, actually the there is more stress re- uh, required to move move the dislocation deform okay. dip- yes yeah move the dislocation deformation is okay very good uh, the answer is right exactly so basically uh, as i told this yield point phenomenon are seen in mild steels or low carbon steel or ferritic steels so here basically we have carbon atoms and nitrogen atoms this carbon atom and nitrogen atoms they what they get diffuse in the materials and goes to the dislocation core right because around the dislocation core we have a tension field and since this carbon atom and nitrogen atom are bigger atoms they uh, lies in the interstitial sites they have a compression field around that then what happens when uh, the diffuse and goes into the uh, dislocation core they will cancel out the tension field around that so due to this thing what happens a more stress will be required to move the dislocation further so it is a kind of pinning pinning of the dislocation dislocation is getting pinned by this solute atom called nitrogen atoms or carbon atoms though these are basically interstitial atoms right so due to which a more stress will be required to move the dislocation this is the reason why we ha- we can have a upper yield point phenomenon so this is the upper yield point you can see then the moment the stress is more on the body hmm, what is happening the dislocation will get rid of this point defect that is carbon or nitrogen so when it will get rid of that defect so a less stress will be required to move the dislocation so this dislocation dislocation motion will be easier now so that is why there is a drop in the stress so that is give rise to the lower yield stress fine so you understand now why what is reason of upper and what is the reason of lower but again you understand we can see many serrations here right this is called yield point phenomenon right this part these are called uh, yield elongation from here to here it is called yield elongation or some people call is uh, luder extension right so here you can see there is a rise and there is a drop there is a rise there is a drop in the yield stresses why due to this pin and pinning and unpinning of the dislocations dislocation will get pinned by the carbon and nitrogen atoms and again it is getting unpinned when the stress is high right again the stress will drop again the stress will rise because it is getting pinned again when it is getting rid of this point defect the stress is going down so this is the thing finally and uh, the interesting point here is from here to here in the material we can see luder bands luder bands are also called slip bands uh, these are basically the boundary between the yield and unyield part of the mate- material right or it is the boundary between your deformed and undeformed part exactly what is happening see you can see here this first image this is the initial image of your tensile test specimen for example you are applying load tensile load here and here right sorry so you can see a luder band is forming here right second you are applying more load huh, on the materials so you can see another luder luder band is forming here but the initial luder band which is formed 45 degree to this uh, tensile axis right or uh, tensile force axis right this is getting propagated in the materials again you can see third image this is third image when the load is increasing more and more we can see this this luder band have extended to a large extent and the second luder band has also extended to the large extent in some in the material but this is the new luder band which has formed here and finally they all will propagate and they will cover the entire specimen and then so this is the last image where the luder band have united or they have completely traveled through the materials right this is the final image you can see hmm. so basically what is happening here this you understand this image everybody have understood the video so now you can see why this luder band uh, are seen basically B- basically there are certain materials for example plastics uh, aluminum magnesium alloys ferritic steels hmm. or your low carbon steels basically what happens in those materials uh, initiation of plastic deformation is difficult but propagation of deformation is easier 
that means initiating the motion of dislocation is difficult but propagating dislocation is is easier right so due to which this luda bands are seen basically so what is happening exactly in initial part you can see in initial part what happens here all the material will not deform a particular part of the material will get yield so yielding will happen in a particular area of the specimen and that will become strain hardened after some times ahead of that portion and the uh, part softer part will get uh, yielded right again it will get strain hardened and an area above that will get strain hard uh, sorry you get yielded so similarly due to this kind of thing this luda bands are seen here it is already written over here if you want to see the same thing is written over here hmm. yield initially uh, local uh, yield initiate locally in a region which uh, then hardens further deformation therefore occurs in the softer metal ahead of it the yield region then propagate across the sample the boundary between the deformed and undeformed part is the luda band right so this is the thing so many times people will ask you to draw a uh, stress versus strain curve for a mild steel or low carbon steel so this is the image and you have to explain how upper yield point is seen how lower yield point is seen and how these serrations are seen right and of what is the cause of this luda bands that means in initial part from here to here from this point to this point there is a non uniform deformation is happening or sir, sir we cannot see your cursor sorry sir cursor your cursor is not being seen okay 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 sorry now it is visible yes sir yes from this point to this point from this point to this point actually what is happening a heterogeneous deformation is happening not a homogeneous deformation because some part of the material is deforming another part is not deforming right but once the stress reaches to this point or uh, we have uh, has strain value of this much then from here a uniform deformation is happening this is the strain hardening part if you remember and from here it is making part right Uh, okay fine so uh, you can see already you have seen this image in the previous class these are the stretch marks in the material which shows yield point phenomenon or which shows this luder band kind of thing hmm. so due to luder bands we have stretch marks on the materials or these are also called stretcher strain marks hmm. stretcher strain marks so if a material is showing yield point phenomenon and i am showing this luder bands they basically shows this uh, stretcher strain marks in the material surface so surface finish will be very poor so nobody will buy this kind of material because of poor surface finish due to presence of this stretch marks or stretcher strain marks right so and the problem uh, people might face is that we have to use a putty on the surface before giving a pa actual paint on it right we cannot do direct painting on it we have to do putty then after using putty you have to do painting on it so these are the problems with this luder bands then what is the solution to this the solution is easy either you remove all the interstitial atoms from the materials like carbon atom and nitrogen atom from the steels right because these are causing um, these are the main cause of uh, uh, pinning of the dislocation and due to which we can see luder bands right pinning and unpinning effect right so what is happening exactly we if you remove this carbon and nitrogen atoms basically technically it is called quartile atmosphere if you have uh, gone through this in uh, your uh, dvm subject quartile atmosphere an atmosphere of solute atoms which are carbon and nitrogen basically interstitial solute atoms near to the dislocation core uh, which pins the dislocation and which will give rise to the yield point phenomenon upper yield point and uh, get rid of dislocation from this point effect gives rise to lower yield point phenomenon right pinning and unpinning effect hmm. so what uh, that is one of the solution so uh, nowadays what is happening this uh, the the people who manufacture car and auto automotive components so they uh, basically use nowadays ief steels interface interstitial free steels interstitial free steels means those steels are free from interstitial atoms like carbon and nitrogen right so this is one of the solution nowadays they are using actually tata steel is using uh, basically as i have heard tata steel is using ief steels for manufacturing of the car and uh, automobile bodies right because they will not show any kind of stretch strain marks because they will luder bands will be absent fine right? 
and the point is what and the solution is if we can add some nitride and carbide forming elements into the steel like aluminum vanadium niobium titanium boron hmm, they are strong carbide nitride former so we can get rid of this solute atoms they will form compounds rather than solute hmm. i think up to this is you got the point okay let me show you Luda, uh, a video of luder bands actually you will enjoy that definitely hmm. just have a look what is happening here yes Mm. Just uh, look at this video. Uh, Luda bands, yes. Just carefully look at this video how Luda bands are forming. Sorry, I'll start here. Hmm. Just have a look. See, just a Luda band has formed here. A Luda band has formed here. Again, a new Luda band is forming in these materials. And some new Luda bands have formed. And you just see that Luda bands will propagate throughout the materials. They will cover the entire materials. Then you'll see that they will propagate from here to here and here to here, slowly, slowly. Now they have nearly covered all the area here, present over here. Just look at the Luda carefully, Luda bands. Huh? These are Luda bands, they are propagating in the materials. Yes, okay. I think you people have enjoyed that video uh, now. Uh, okay, fine. So you, everybody have understood this uh, uh, ill point phenomenon, Luda bands and uh, the problems with Luda bands, right? And the solution to that. Now, uh, due to interaction between this uh, dislocation with the solute atom, we have, a, uh, we have solute solution strengthening. And second one is the yield point phenomenon as we see. And there is another phenomenon we can see that is strain azing phenomenon. Hmm. Strain azing phenomenon. Can you people figure it out what is happening in this figure? Let me see who can figure. I will give you five seconds to think of it. Just uh, for a hint, I can give you this is a unloading part when load will be removed. Hmm. Can you please figure it out what is happening here? This, this from here low uh, the metal is unloaded it's what interesting thing you are seeing and this this curve means again loading has started from here to here let me see you can figure it out here This is the unloading part. Here material is unloaded. Again, the material is loaded from this part. And just see what is happening again. Just try to figure it out. Just look at this one and this one.
okay uh, can you people tell me what is this point what is this point upper upper rail point very good what is this point lower rail point lower rail point again uh, what is happening here as i told loading. Loading. loading has happened that's why the graph is like this but again loading has started what is happening again here new upper, upper uh, again upper rail point lower rail point yes so this is actually strain aging phenomenon see many times people ask what is strain aging so you never have to be confused in this see these are two terms one is strain and the one is aging hmm these are two terms strain means what you understand by strain change in length by original length simply we know that right so that means we are deforming the material that is strain in the materials right we are giving a plastic deformation to the materials that is strain right aging means we are giving some time to the material without any application of load there will be no load only a relative low temperature will be there or a room temperature will be there will allow the material to remain in that condition in strain condition but there will be no load right so this is called strain aging hmm. so what is happening you can see we have uh, given a load uh, and we draw a stress strain curve so the curve is like this we get a upper rail point we get a lower rail point these are the serra serrations finally we will get a strain hardening but after getting a strain hardening here i will stop the loading i will release the load so this is the curve you can understand this unloading part and after this part from here i will allow the material to be there at a relatively low temperature i will keep my material at a relatively low temperature for like 1 hour 2 hour 3 hour 5 hour 6 hour like that again after that what i am doing just wait yes uh, i am back so what is happening here you can understand after uh, unloading i am allowing the material to be there at a relatively low temperature i'll keep my material at a relatively low temperature right suppose in the furnace or in the oven for itself right so after uh, taking out my sample again i will do loading on it again i will apply a tensile load so what is happening you can see again i can able to see what can you people tell me again i, I am able to see this yield point phenomenon again upper yield point i can able to see right so this is nothing but strain aging i have strained the material then i am doing aging due to which again i am when i am doing loading i can able to see this effect upper yield point and lower yield point right suppose after this point you will unload the materials right you will unload the material and again you do what again you keep the material at a relatively low temperature without any load hmm. again after some time some hours you take out the material and do loading on it so what will happen again you can able to see a yield point and an upper yield point and lower yield point so this kind of thing is called strain aging so what is the main reason you understand can you tell me what is the main reason behind this sir to get Why, high uh, strength oh god to, to my to question is strength. my question Sir, is wa, my question is why you will again see a upper yield point just few minutes before i told you what is the main reason behind the upper yield point why more stress is required due to diffusion of carbon and ah uh, yes due to very very nice that means uh, why there is a diffusion of carbon why what i am doing so that my diffusion of carbon will be there or nitrogen will be there sir you are keeping it for some yes time. very good i am keeping my material at a relatively low temperature that means i am giving a temperature to the materials so once you are giving temperature what kind of mechanism will start diffusion diffusion carbon and nitrogen are very small atom diffusivity is more they are lighter lighter in weight so diffusivity is more so carbon and nitrogen atoms what they will diffuse to the dislocation core and they will pin the dislocations and once the dislocation will get pinned up it will not easily get rid of that you have to apply more stress that is why you will get a upper yield point 
the moment the dislocation will free from the point defect that is uh, carbon or nitrogen the stress will go down again you'll see lower in point so then you are deforming easily there is no problem you, you are getting strain hardening but again if you uh, unload the material here for example like this and you will keep the material at a relatively low temperature or uh, relatively room temperature also sometimes uh, if the concentration of carbon and nitrogen are more then what will happen again you can able to see the this kind of yield point phenomenon upper yield point and lower yield point i think this part is clear everybody have understood and this kind of atmosphere around the dislocation is called cotral atmosphere right many people may Hello, ask sir. yes sir is diffusion possible in relatively low temperature yes uh, as i told carbon and nitrogen are very small atoms and the weight is very low it depend upon a diffusion coefficient the diffusion coefficient is very low for carbon and nitrogen now you got the point like 200 degree 300 oh. degree is enough sometimes okay sir okay sir uh, one degree to you said that uh, if steels uh, in case of that, uh, how we can get strength in if steels in if steels you can get strength by other different mechanisms you can have other mechanisms right you can okay, you, sir, you, sir. yes you can have strain hardening we'll we'll discuss that soon hmm. we'll discuss that soon we'll get strain hardening we can have other kind of hardening if possible like uh, grain refinement you understand hello um, you yes, understand yes. Yes. yes we can have many different mechanism of strengthening are there so it depends upon how, what is the application part hmm. and this uh, due to this kind of phenomenon ductility is reduced basically in the materials huh? okay there is another phenomenon due to interaction between dislocation and solute atoms this point point defects or solute atom like carbon and nitrogen we can have strain aging another another phenomenon hmm. strain aging phenomenon which already i have discussed that and you can see uh, same thing is written over here okay there is another phenomenon called dynamic strain aging so can you people figure it out what is happening here in dynamic strain aging we just have discussed about the strain aging now this is dynamic strain aging just look at the figure you will get the answer something is lying over here the name is in dynamic dynamic different dynamic. temperatures sorry sorry so the different temperatures no 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 i am no, not no, asking no, different no. temperatures i am asking what is happening in the dynamic strain aging sir repeated yielding awesome yes it is written repeated yielding but why repeated yielding is happening just look at the image carefully see the difference sir in some cases there are the selections and others there are no selections ha huh, why why that is the question no? what that is dynamic strain aging you understand everybody have understood strain aging phenomenon yes or no everybody have understood what is strain aging phenomenon yes sir yes sir yes so this is dynamic so how it is dynamic just look at the image carefully everything is written over there so diffusion takes place at a faster rate or yes yes very good so at what at what conditions just look at the temperature it is written already it is already written just look at the image carefully at what temperature intermediate temperature yes intermediate temperature 100 200 degree centigrade this is a image this is a stress versus strain plot for a room temperature that is nothing is happening basically you can see at a high temperature like above 300 nothing is happening but at a temperature of 100 to 200 degree centigrade in some alloys we can able to see this kind of phenomenon dynamic strain aging strain aging but it is dynamic dynamic means dynamic means you understand upper lower upper lower upper continuous upper lower upper lower so that means dislocation is moving fast but due to temperature itself this kind of temperature the there is a diffusion of carbon and nitrogen atom to the dislocation core so dislocation will get pin up is fast then again it will get rid of the point point defect again it will move easily again it will get pin up so this will be still be a continuous process ha uh, dynamic strain aging temperature is there and pinning and unpinning is there right 
pinning and unpinning of dislocation is there and temperature is there so this is a very beautiful image of dynamic strain agent okay so i am done with this topic uh, next we'll move to uh, another interesting strengthening mechanism Hello, is, sir. yes so why there is no sensations in that 300 degree centigrade line Hey, you understand why, why, what may be reason just you can, can you think of it what may be the reason we just we just try to figure it out what may be the happen what is happening here what happens when we increase the temperature of the materials what happened to the ductility ha huh, ductility, ductility increases ha ductility increases increases or... what decreases strength strength decreases if strength will decrease stress will be less or more less stress will be more or less obviously the stress will be less means dislocation movement will be easy or difficult easy 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 so that is happening here there is no problem you are increasing the temperature so there is no problem basically so this is room temperature here means diffusion is not happening for the carbon and nitrogen atoms but or some other atoms if it is present some interstitial atoms basically ha huh? but here it is happening what temperature is very high so dislocation moment motion is easy at high temperature there is no problems basically but here it is what is happening dislocation motion is not so high and diffusion is good here so diff diff diffusion of solute atom to the dislocation core is fast so that's why it is good even if there may be a diffusion of atoms but strength is going down so dislocation uh, needs a very low stress to move easily so it is moving easily without any problem you understood now yes sir Yeah, okay fine there is another strengthening mechanism we'll discuss that is strain hardening let me see. let me see how many of you have remember what are the other names let me see from ipm class do can anybody recall this any other names work other hardening. name of... work, work hardening. hardening very good very good very good any other names age hardening A is hardening. No, A is hardening is different thing. A is hardening and precipitation hardening are same because you are giving some time to the materials to get hardened. That is called aging, actually. Dislocation strengthening. Yes, dislocation strengthening. Somebody have told me. Any other name? Okay, strain hardening is also called work hardening. It's also called dislocation strengthening. and also called work hardening strain hardening okay these are two names very good names work hardening or strain hardening or dislocation strengthening or dislocation hardening hmm. so now uh, from this name itself is showing saying that what is work hardening huh. work two things are here listen it carefully work hardening work means we are doing work on the materials that means we are deforming the materials we are deforming the materials plastically and hardening is there so that's name is work hardening by, by doing working on the materials that means by doing metal working on materials by doing rolling forging extrusion or any deformation on the materials we are increasing the strength of the materials work hardening dislocation strengthening means this strengthening is, is due to dislocation dislocation interaction right so this kind of strengthening is due to dislocation dislocation interaction right one dislocation will interact with another dislocation or many dislocation will interact with many dislocations here right basically uh, dislocation is di interacting with another dislocation means what can you tell me in the previous lecture i have shown you many many good figures and uh, explanations a dislocation is interacting with another dislocation what it means what it means
what it means actually dislocation dislocation interacts or dislocate something of dislocation will interact make it fast how you are taking so much of time in the previous lecture i have shown you many things na these things i have shown you so dislocation is interacting with another dislocation what it means so either repel nahle annulate karibo okay fine but dislocation is interacting with another dislocation means dislocation are interacting or dislo uh, something of the dislocation is interacting with one so the stress field around the dislocation ah, is interacting good. obviously the strain field of the stress field around the dislocation will interact if they are like they will repel if they are uh, opposite they will attract right okay uh, we'll move to that point so you understand so strain hardening means Stra hardening or strengthening due to interaction between the strain field of the dislocations right so i'll show you very uh, in this uh, in this part please carefully listen the lecture huh? you have to make notes out of that i will show you mainly images the graph and plots and the explanation which i will tell you you have to write it down so you can see this is a very interesting okay here what i have written strain hardening resulting strain hardening is the result of resulting dislocation 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 strain field interaction here i have written hmm. so just how to explain this suppose i have a nominal stress versus nominal strain plot hmm. this is the plot of nominal stress versus nominal strain so what i am doing i am doing a stress versus strain curve here you can see this is your uh, yield strength this is your uts right this is your yield strength and this is your uts huh. then the material will fail after some time so suppose this is a fracture point huh. so so what is happening suppose you deform a materials listen it carefully so suppose this is the first plot showing yield strength and tensile strength of the materials without any deformation on materials right i am doing a tensile test i am getting a plot like this right suppose you do what you strain the material first you deform the material first to this point for example up to this point huh. this point is above the yield point, yield, uh, yield strength point and below the uts point so here then i will uh, unload the materials so the moment i will unload the materials right like this this unloading of the materials so what is this can anybody remember what is this part what is this plastic, plastic deformation no what is the name of this part not plastic deformation offset this oh god this is not offset this part just look at the strain part i am showing you strain na this is the strain axis permanent this plastic is the per strain ha uh, this is the permanent plastic strain which will be there in the materials why there is a permanent plastic strain why why there is a permanent plastic strain in the material yes. because it has undergone because the material has because the material has undergone plastic deformation, the material, the material has... plastic deformation. Ah, ah. right that is very good because i have done i have apply a load up to this much that's why right so there is a permanent plastic strain but if i will do unloading here so how what how, how much plastic strain will be there can anyone tell me if i will unload the material over here at this point if i at unload this point if i unload the material zero zero very good so uh, that means from this point plastic deformation has already started right anyways so you understand i am unloading the material now suppose again the same material listen it carefully after unloading if i will again apply the load on the materials to deform it plastically so what will happen this is the point so this is your new yield point or this is a new yield strength sigma a. i have written over here new yield strength and the material will deform again and you will get a uts actually not this one uts you will get a uts higher than that fine so now can you can you people tell me uh, can anybody uh, uh, conclude this one then what is strain hardening 
let me see you can explain it quickly in short can anyone tell me suppose i will give you a material right now a piece of steel so how you can justify that strain hardening is, has happened sir uh, the yield strength of a deformed material is higher yes very good so uh, suppose i will give you a piece of steel cast steel there is no deformation right i will give you a piece of cast steel so how you can explain somebody this material has become strain hardened or uh, how you can explain it just tell me quickly yes make it fast let me see who can explain arunima can you explain this suppose i will hand over you a steel which has not undergone plastic deformation okay how can you explain that uh, you can do strain hardening on it or the you can harden the material by strain hardening arunima can you explain no no sir acha you have understood this plot what i have un uh, explained can you please explain this one at least let me see i want explanation from you how, how, what is happening here and tell me yes okay asutosh sahu can you explain this one asutosh sahu asutosh Yes, sir. Can you explain this plot? Sir, uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Sir, when plastic deformation is done, uh, mm -hmm. dislocation they pile up. Then additional dislocations are generated. Okay. Have I talked about anything about additional dislocation and pile up in this image or in this figure? I want you need to explain no, this sir, one. Sir, strain hardening is done that way. Ah, strain hardening is done that way. So, what is how how we can explain? suppose i will hand over you a steel a cast steel after doing casting i will hand over you a steel so how you can do strain hardening on it or how you can show somebody that this uh, steel can be strain hardened which i have explained that, that in that way you can tell me yes okay fine bishwaj choudhary can you explain uh, no sir chandan Yes, sir. Yes, can you explain how strain hardening? You can do strain hardening on a piece of steel, sir, by increasing the carbon percentage. Uh, by increasing the carbon percentage, you can strain hardening a steel. What you are saying? Oh God! By increasing the carbon percentage, you can do strain hardening. Actually, what is strain hardening? I told in the first initial what I told. What is strain hardening? So it is a strengthening mechanism. Yes, I understand okay. strengthening mechanism, but how hardening will be there, sir? Uh, if we are. So what is strain? Sorry. What is strain? Sir, strain. Huh? It change in length per unit length. Huh? So, so uh, what is hardening? Hardening means uh, to increase the strength. Yes. Of a so you are you are you are telling the same right thing, but you are saying we we have to add more carbon. Carbon, carbon is a uh, carbon is a which kind of material? Solute. It is an interstitial atom. It is an interstitial sol sol atom. So in yes. strain hardening, uh, do 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 we have an interaction between dislocation and uh, the solute atom? Uh, okay, fine. Uh, if if Sita if Sita uh, Sahu, can you? can you tell me do you do we have any interaction between dislocation and a solute atom like carbon if sita jibojyoti yes sir do we have any interaction between here as I, have i told any interaction of dislocation with any solute atoms here in this part no sir right so so can you can you please explain this figure what i told 
सर फर्स्ट वी टेक द मटेरियल टू प्लास्टिक रीजन एंड वी अनलोड इट एंड वी अनलोड इट सो देन आफ्टर सम टाइम वी अगेन देन वी अगेन टेक इट टू द प्लास्टिक रीजन सो यू कैन सी ए इंक्रीज इन इल स्ट्रेंथ वेरी गुड मटेरियल वेरी गुड वेरी गुड वेरी गुड ओके फाइन understood. suppose uh, okay let me explain in easy way suppose you have a piece of metal, uh, steel for example you cut that piece of steel into two part hmm. right after cutting the steel into two part one part you do tensile test first after doing tensile test on the one piece of steel you will get a yield strength you will get a uts both thing you will get to the next piece of steel what you do you deform it either uh, first let it be you deform it plastically first then you do tensile test on it so after doing tensile test on it you will not you should get the same yield strength same uts but you will notice that the yield strength obtained in undeformed steel is different to that of the deformed steel the deformed steel will have a high yield strength and high tensile strength so that is the strength increases due to strain in the material because you already you have deformed it plastically you have some certain strain inside the material right so that is called strain hardening i think everybody have understood now yes or no yes sir but in this in the same plot i have shown you here initially you have a yield strain this one uts this one but what you are doing you are deforming the metal up to this point then you are unloading it after unloading it you again try to load it so what will happen you will get the yield strength is now this one not this one from here deformation will start plastic deformation will start from this point and uts will go high also this is not the original this is original uts which will final uts also goes high then it will fall down so here what is written yield strength of the deformed metal is higher than the unde undeformed metal so this is all about strain hardening hardening due to strain in the material hmm. and this is the last part i will discuss and uh, i will end this lecture over here you can see the percentage cold work versus strength and ductility so this axis is showing you percentage cold work so this is the direction of percentage cold work percentage cold work means this one initial area cross sectional area minus final cross sectional area divided by initial cross sectional area into 100 this is kind of percentage reduction kind of thing hmm. higher cross sectional area minus lower cross sectional area divided by higher cross sectional area into 100 ha huh? percentage cold work and this is direction is strain direction ha huh? this is showing you stress we'll find out the stress actually this is the thing we have to find out actually but what is it showing it is showing cold work versus strain so you can see this one this is the suppose when there is no cold work this is this figure this first figure is showing when there is no cold work and now suppose this is the 10% cold work metal stress versus strain curve suppose this is the 30% suppose this is the 40% stress versus strain curve and this is the 40% this is the 50% like this can anybody figure it out what is happening here with increasing in the percentage cold work what is happening to the stress versus strain curve just look at this one can you figure it out area under the curve increases area under the curve increases no, no, how sir, you can no, justify no. that just look at the y point u u point and s point and just figure it That's out that's increasing sir. what is happening so so the yield point is increasing yes and also the u and also yes. the yes very good so the this y points you can see it is increasing right with percentage cold work percentage cold work means you understand i am deforming my metal plastically so in this direction i am deforming more and more and more and more the cross sectional area on deformation increases or decreases let me ask adarsh naik the cross sectional area decreases or increases with plastic deformation adarsh naik sir i think it increases 
it increases what you are no. saying <laughs> have you yeah. have you have you seen uh, the stress versus strain plot for which i have explained you earlier about the uh, gaze length part what is uh, happening to the gaze length area processional area sir upon increasing in deformation uh, it decreases yes what about to the gaze length it increases or decreases with deformation increases yes so what is happening here here the cross sectional area is decreasing ha huh, that that's, that is i am uh, that is i am saying na so why, why you are saying something wrong thing <laughs> apologies okay so this y is actually yield yield strength and u is the uts and f is the fracture stress so now can you people tell me quickly with percentage cold work what is happening to the yield strength and uts and fracture stress let me can you tell me quickly yes sir yes. sir yield strength and uts are increasing but fracture stress is decreasing yes yes very good so what happens to the ductility how you can define ductility ductility can be defined in this axis right ductility axis. is decreasing yes very good ductility is decreasing why because you can see initially fracture is happening here so from this point to this point it will show you the ductility yes or no from this point yes. to this point shows the ductility but yes, sir. when you increase the cold work suppose this is 10% cold work so you can see this is the plot that means from here to here this is the ductility so ductility is decreasing if you join this one with this point so ductility is from this one to this one so ductility is decreasing but yield strength is increasing ultimate tensile strength is increasing so with increasing in the percentage cold work we have seen that yield strength increases uts increases but the ductility is decreasing so there is this is this is the way you can harden a material or strengthen a material by doing cold working on the materials cold working means working relatively low temperature at relatively low temperature like below uh, recrystallization temperature right but here it is written something reduction in ductility in, is deleterious as no plenty of warning is the uh, warning is there before fracture so duct if ductility reduces this is a one kind of deleterious thing because plenty of warning will be not there before fracture right but uh, advantage you are getting is you can increase the strength of the materials so you understand why cold working is done after hot working right to increase the increase the strength of the materials at the end okay i will stop here and uh, i will continue uh, the lecture from next slide about strain hardening Okay you people can leave but if you have any doubt you can